Welcome everybody. My name is Carole Brigodeau. I'm Director of Communication for Spirit Europe. I'm here together with my colleague Sarah Melina Sibel, who is Hello. Director in charge of internal market issues. And we are here together to tell you more about the commitment taken by the spirits industry to provide consumers with meaningful information on our products. But before going to any details, Sarah and I, I would like to tell you a few words about Spirits Europe. So Spirits Europe is the European presentation of the spirit sector here based in Brussels. We represent and defend the interest of the sector. And the sector is, is, is a massive, important economic sector. We have and employ one million people directly and indirectly in production and distribution of the products. We also provide more than 23 billion euros to European Exchequer in VAT and excise duty. And we are also one of the first agri-food exporter with more than 12.5 billion exports uh, in 2019. So thank you very much, Carol, for the introduction. And welcome everybody indeed to this short video on uh, Spirits Europe and our consumer information project. As Carol indicated, as a sector, uh, we are very progressive and um, we signed on the 4th of June 2019 in Paris the so-called Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, it's a document uh, agreed with the European Commission and the membership after roughly two years of negotiations. And uh, in this document, we and our membership commits to provide consumer information beyond what is legally required from the European Commission and European legislation. This means very concretely that we are going to provide energy information on the label of a spirit drink and we are going to provide full ingredient listing and the energy information via an e-label. So that could be a QR code or the barcode. What took us to the agreement that was signed on the 4th of June in 2019. Basically, ever since spirit drinks, as well as other alcoholic beverages, have been excluded from European legislation on consumer information. That means legally we are not required to provide energy information nor ingredient listings on the bottles of our uh, products. So what you know from other food products does not apply for spirit drinks. However, as a sector, we always felt that we may want to go beyond that. And in 2019, we found the right frame to go beyond what we always wanted to. So in a nutshell, after two years of negotiations together with other industry players, uh, our colleagues from Committee 20, for instance, but also the European Commission and in close cooperation with the membership, we created the document the so-called Memorandum of Understanding, which has roughly 20 pages and in which we explain very much in detail how we will provide consumer information. A long process with the Commission, almost more than two years, and uh, how difficult was it to convince the Commission about the uh, commitment, self-regulation commitment taken by the Commission? Carol, actually that's a very good question. So. Um, Mr. Andrew Kaitis, who was then uh, working for DG Sante, so the body in the European Commission responsible for public and consumer health, was of course skeptical. Uh, his job was to secure that European consumers get the information they deserve. Of course, he was very critical, being a person taking his job very seriously. Um, the negotiations were not always easy. Um, but always very constructive. And um, everybody agrees that the end result after two years uh, is very good and it goes beyond what is legally required and it is also providing relevant information to the consumer. You ask me if I feel that this entire process was a success. I would say it was. Because after all, Mr. Andrew Kaitis took time to come to Paris and to join our annual general meeting in 2019. He posed with us for a picture that he knew was going to be used for public display. And also a couple of weeks after is a co-signing ceremony. He and his colleague, Commissioner Hogan, responsible for trade in the European Union, send us a joint letter in which they express and stress how much they welcome our initiative and uh, that they encourage as many companies as possible to join this new way of providing consumer information, which will dramatically change the European Union's landscape in the provision of consumer information. 
The commitment was signed on the 4th of June a year ago, uh, and it has two uh, very different legs. Uh, can you tell us more about the elements that has to go on label and the other elements that goes online? Actually, that's one of the most favorite parts of the MOU that I'm happy to talk to you about. Uh, the memorandum of understanding, to break it down to the basic elements, consists of two parts. On the one hand, we commit to provide consumer information on the label of a spirits drink itself. So the consumer can go to a shop, pick up any type of spirit drink, take a look at the label and get information on the energy. And that information will be provided on the one hand per 100 milliliters, but also per portion. And portion would generally be a portion of 30 milliliters, but of course in some countries and uh, for some drinks, other portion sizes are more appropriate. And then of course our members label according to what is nationally required by legislation. The other element of the Memorandum of Understanding is the provision of consumer information digitally, so via an e-label. As I said before, an e-label could be, for instance, a QR code, but it could also be information included in the barcode, which all spirits already feature today. The advantage of that is that there would not be any extra space of the label used for the provision of consumer information. Um, I think in the past months also globally and also in Europe we have seen that people are more and more used to scan barcodes and QR codes. For instance, if you go to a restaurant or to a bar nowadays, very often you will see that the menu is not as it used to be on the table uh, as a paper document, but you will see a QR code that's glued to the table. You pick up your phone or whatever mobile device you have at your hand, you scan the code and you get the information you need. Obviously, the commitment is not to have uh, all the labels covered uh, at the end of this year. So can you tell us a bit more what is the timeline that uh, the sector has agreed and how they're going to report to the Commission to show that effectively the commitment is being implemented? Yes, Carol, indeed. The labels will not have changed by the end of the week, that's for sure, but nevertheless, we commit to a very, very dynamic rollout. Uh, dynamic means that uh, by the end of this year, so in the report that we will issue at the beginning of 2021, 25% of the EU market's uh, spirit drinks will be labeled according to 100 ml and 30 ml, as I just explained. By the end of 2021, 50% of all our members' SKUs on the EU market will be labeled, following 66% by the end of 2022. 66% may sound a bit like a weird and random figure, but actually it is not. 66% means two out of three bottles on the supermarket shelves in the European Union will have consumer information on the label. And this is the objective we are going for. Absolutely, as everybody, when you set a goal, you're always happy to overachieve. So 66% is not where we will stop, but 66% is an ambitious obligation for our membership. And of course, um, here I would like to stress that also small and medium-sized enterprises in the European Union, the so-called SMEs, play a very significant role. Uh, in many markets, depending on the beverage you want to consume, it is the SMEs that are very often represented in the supermarket shelves. And uh, only by looking at our bigger members, we are not going be to be able to deliver on the commitment. We really need the SMEs to play their part and we are more than happy to re help them with various tools uh, that we have prepared. Saha, can you tell me therefore what you're doing to help the company member of Spirits Europe and, and others if they want to, of course, because they are not uh, limited, the commitment is not limited to our membership, uh, to help them to achieve the uh, goals that we set a year ago? Yes, as you say, Carol, that's a very important point. Of course, here in Brussels, in the Secretariat, 
we are aware that the commitment is in a way a challenge to the membership. Um, and in order to help them to deliver on the commitment, we have developed a toolbox that contains a very detailed guidance document on how companies can act if they want to deliver on the memorandum of understanding. Uh, we go into the details of how to provide energy information on the label. You can get pictures and images to be used. Uh, we have a calculator that will help you to calculate the average um, energy for the basic spirit drinks that you can refer to if you do not want to involve a food lab. We offer roadshows, that means that Spirits Europe staff is coming to you, to your company, to your national association to give workshops. Uh, this is not a once in a lifetime opportunity, but we come as often as you need us. Uh, in terms of travel restrictions, we organize uh, e-meetings and online workshops. Um, and of course, you can always call us, send us emails and we get back to you in 48 hours. Yeah, this is great. And have you been very successful so far? Well, um, success is always a big word, but of course, uh, we are very happy with the output we have so far. And um, we could gain various other members to join uh, and co-sign the uh, Memorandum of Understanding. Um, those were mainly uh, trade associations in the member states, but also one company. And uh, what is great is that we also got some inquiries from outside the membership. So also organizations that are not part of Spirits Europe co-signed the Memorandum of Understanding and are fully committed to deliver on the commitment of the sector. Market to start saying effectively uh, labels on uh, bottles. Do you have feedback from companies who have started to uh, already implement the uh, MOU? Yes, Carole. I do. And what is very great to see is that um, once companies start to implement the commitment, they realize that it's actually quite easy. So on the one hand, um, members and those who co-sign the memorandum of understanding can of course use the labels that are already printed. It's not about throwing away what has been done. It's more when you change, change for the better. So um, companies typically that started to uh, implement the MOU reported figures as high as 93% of uh, SKUs labeled according to the new images and the including consumer information. 93% um, of course is um, a fantastic result. Uh, there are also companies that report 44% after several months of implementing the MOU and others will follow suit as soon as they can. It's just very motivating really to see that if companies want to implement the MOU, it is possible. When going to store indeed uh, across Europe, uh, you can go to the spirits uh, shelves and you will see a number of bottles which have already the information we committed. Uh, I let you discover effectively the information energy on per 100 ml, energy per serving size, and also the unit information because you will discover and learn uh, how much there is, how, much, how many units there are in, in a bottle for responsible uh, drinking said to uh, people outside that actually uh, from the click of a barcode or from the click of a QR code, consumer will have the information about uh, the nutritional information and the ingredients that are in our products. Can you tell us a bit more how this is going to work for companies? Uh, indeed, Carol, um, you're referring to the second element of our MOU, the e-label development. Um, the e-label is developing a bit slower than the on-label uh, because here we are working with GS1, the global standardization body behind the barcode, which will be a known name to many of you. Uh, with GS1, we are working on the EU level as well as on member state level. And uh, it is a barcode driven project that means <coughs> retailers as well as our membership are involved in order to ensure a smooth communication of standardized information on energy as well as on ingredients. So at the end of the day, if everything goes as we foresee, consumers will be 
able to scan the barcode and they will get a full nutritional information uh, list as well as ingredient listing for spirit drinks. What is important to realize is that in order to make use of this barcode system, companies need to be a member of GS1. GS1 has national offices where companies can register. The fee is nominal, as we understand, and depends on the member state. As not all spirit drinks producers wish to become a member of GS1, we also looked into the development of a second option and uh, together with our colleagues from the wine sector, we are developing a platform. Uh, this platform will operate also and work for you if you are not a member of GS1. And um, at the end of the day, it will be a website to which you log on to. You will provide the information you wish to display on the e-label. So in line with the MOU, that will be nutritional information as well as ingredient listing. And the platform, it will generate a QR code for you that you can then put on your label. However, we are in the process of discussing with GS1 that the platform will also be compatible with GS1 standards. So you can also link the platform to GS1 standards, the so-called GDSN. But Carol, you are our communications director and uh, I know that you've been working on providing consumer information online as well and uh, you support the memorandum of understanding in that way significantly. So can you tell us a bit more about what you've been doing? So when we launched and signed the memorandum of understanding a year ago, at the same time, we launched a website, responsibledrinking.eu, which is a website that is in existence for a while, but we have added a specific uh, chapter where you can get uh, detailed information of on all the spirits category, 46 spirits category, and you get the information of uh, general and average information and this is to be used while and waiting for the online system per SKUs per product to be ready. Consumer can already see uh, what, is, what are the ingredients, the main ingredients used in the different categories. They can see effectively the energy uh, value uh, per 100 ml and per serving. They can see the list of ingredients and very interesting as well, they get a short description out of the legislation how a product is made because you have to realize and those in the business knows that the, uh, the spirits drinks are heavily regulated, how they can be produced, what's permitted, what is not. So you have an overview of all the information per category that is already readily available uh, to the consumer while waiting for detailed information per products. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, that's very interesting and I think also relevant because as I understand, also national associations can use that information for their own national purposes. Great. Well, um, I think that's it from our side for today. If you have any questions, you can of course always reach out to us either by email or by phone. Uh, you see our contact details on the slide in the background. Um, thank you very much for joining and I hope that we will hear from you soon and that we will see your labeled bottles in the supermarkets by the end of the year. Thank you very much. Bye bye.